doing? I'm getting ready here for your office. You're getting late for function. You're still waiting. I'm getting ready for one hour. I've been sitting. Why are you shouting all the time here? Yeah? You know, from morning I'm slogging and you're getting ready. Can't get ready for so whole day. Whole day. What do you do, man? I do so much for you. You know what? I've been managing people at office and at home, and and you can't get ready. Is it so difficult for you? Don't shout at me. What? I'm working so hard for you. What are you working? You're sitting at home the whole day. Washing results, huh? You know how many people do I have to manage? And at home, I can't get ready one one simple function. Please, for everything you're shouting at me, I don't like. Do you understand? Do you understand any time? I don't know. Oh, you know only crying. No. Uh, do you ever? I can't even cry peacefully. Instead of that, could you could have got ready and come? Instead of crying, you know, simply always crying, crying, and this damn overflowing man can't. Already too much of floods, please. Have you seen these sort of scenes? Every now and then, somewhere or the other, in different uh, circumstances. And has it made you wonder, particularly if you happen to be a lady? Has it made you wonder why is it that men don't have emotions? Why is it that this guy just you know shoots off his rocker and starts screaming and shouting? Doesn't he have any emotion? Doesn't he understand? This is his own wife, his own uh, life partner, person whom he claims to love at least. Yet this is the way he is behaving. Okay, so let us answer one very basic, uh, fundamental question before we proceed. Do men have emotions? Hmm. I don't know whether uh, you ladies will agree with me or not, but why is it that there are men who join the military and become so passionate, so patriotic, so determined that they are willing to give up their life for the sake of their country? Why is it that there are men who are willing to give up their life for the sake of their uh, loved ones? Why is it that a man is willing to shout and, uh, you know, fight and overcome for the sake of his uh, lady love? No, is that emotion or is it not emotion? That is what we need to ask ourselves. See, emotions, we are... We are all aware of it, but I'll, I'll just repeat it just for the sake of it, that we all have thoughts in our mind, the conscious thoughts, the subconscious thoughts which are stored in our uh, memory and our minds, unconscious thoughts which are deeply rooted below but are not available to us, but yet they make a difference in our actions and in our words. So all these thoughts perpetually 24 by 7 are going on in our mind. These thoughts lead to Emotions, feelings, bhavnai, bhavnai galu. And it is the emotions which determine our action. All our actions, all our words, everything is determined by our emotions. Depending on how I feel, I react or respond. There's a lot of difference between the two. But why is it that for the same emotion, two people respond or react in a different manner? Particularly here, I am focusing on the gender uh, roles. If you just caught a glimpse of this argument that was going on between a typical husband and wife on a very minor issue that you haven't got ready on time. What is the emotion? The husband feels disappointed let down, frustrated, that I wanted my wife to be ready on time and she is not ready. So I am having this strong emotion. I want to do something about it and I want to express it. The wife also feels I am being, you know, not rewarded, not acknowledged, not accepted. I've been slogging away the whole day. How does it make a difference if I'm a few minutes late? I have to, you know, after all the work that I've done and all that, I have to be presentable. I am a woman after all. I have to 
dress up and see that uh, I do a little bit of makeup and I'm properly presentable when we are going to meet people outside. So I am also feeling unloved. I'm also feeling disappointed. I'm also feeling frustrated. The emotions are very, very similar. But if you see the actions are totally different. Here was this man shouting his head off and his wife breaking down and crying. Yes, I know there are wives who shout louder than their husbands, but those are a minority. Inevitably, we have this uh, thing that men express their strong emotions by shouting and women express their strong emotions by crying. In fact, this is the title of a very good book by John Gray, which says, Why Women Men Shout and Why Women Cry. I have read it long back and on and off, I have referred to it when needed. So I thought, you know, that gave me a little idea that why not we use that as a means to do a little bit of introspection and to understand how things go, you know, in this very crucial aspect of man-woman uh, relationships. Okay. Let me take you all the way back to childhood. See, this issue, while it may be typical of adult behavior, it does not start at adult behavior. It starts with childhood. I remember personally, I must have been all of, you know, four or five years uh, um, uh, old. And one day I fell down and I saw some spots of red on my knees. I thought that is blood coming out and I'm going to die. So I started screaming at the top of my lungs. My father came running out wondering what happened. And then he saw what I'm crying about. He just brushed those, uh, you know, red spots off my knee. And he said, what's wrong with you? Why are you crying like a girl? Now, daddy at that age is a great guy, okay? He's your hero, he's your role model, he's everything. So when daddy says, don't cry like a girl, you take it as the gospel truth. But you know what? Daddies don't tell their little boys how to cry like a boy. They only say, don't cry like a girl. So when I don't know how to cry like a boy, what do I do? I suppress. Next time I'm hurt, I'm, I've got tears brimming in my eyes, but I choke my tears, try to put on a brave face, and I continue with whatever has to be done, right? Till I come to adolescence. Now I feel I'm a big, macho, grown-up boy. And when I look around, more vulnerable people, the little ones, the girls, even mummy for that matter. And I say that now I want to show the world who I am and what I am. And I start raising my voice. I start shouting. I start arguing. I start what parents refer to as back answering. And at that time, my daddy never told me, don't shout like a boy. In fact, sometimes if a mother tells, you know, look at your son, you know, the way he is shouting for small, small things, what a short temper he has developed and he starts screaming, he starts raising his voice. That's not very good for him. Probably daddy may have said, it's okay, yaar. he's a boy, he'll get over it, he's a teenager. Now, the same father is reinforcing a certain behavior. So what happens? The boy grows up into adulthood thinking that this is the right way of doing it. You don't cry. It is sissies or girls who cry. And it is okay to shout. See, as it is, most surveys show that men tend to be more left-brained than uh, women. I don't know what the neurological science behind it is, but even as a person who does a lot of career guidance and, you know, we do this assessments, aptitude testing and all that, where one of the factors that I test is whether this individual is left brain or right brain. You'll be surprised to see how many girls turn out to be right brain and how many boys turn out to be left brain. And the funny thing is, the few boys who are not left brain, they don't fit into the education system. Because they are not the types who will go to IITs and IIMs and do all those things. The education system has been made for left-brainers. You are supposed to be good in 
mathematical, logical, analytical, sequential, critical thinking. Only then, academically, you are successful. But there are a lot of people who are creative, who are intuitive, who are emotional, who have spatial and kinesthetic uh, uh, skills, who have good, very interpersonal skills. No, education system doesn't recognize that. So as these children grow up, what happens? Let's say there's this girl who's showing typically right brain characteristics and she cries instead of shouting. At the same time, she shows this, you know, signs of creativity, emotionally mature, dealing well with people, understanding a lot of, uh, you know, intuitive uh, uh, things. So we encourage such girls to go into careers which are connected to those fields. Whereas, sad to say, even in 2022, when the world has progressed so much, we still have innumerable parents who think that if it is a boy child, he has to go to IIT, nothing less than that. So what are we doing? We are constantly sharpening the left brain of boys and allowing the right brain of girls to blossom out. We are creating these differences. Let us not abdicate our responsibility. Every generation has been creating right up to today. We continue to create that thing. So inevitably what happens is, okay, this guy may do very well. He may go to whatever best of institutions. He may become somebody great. He may become a... IAS officer, military officer, IIM, Harvard, Stanford, whatever he may do. But can he handle interpersonal situations? Does he have that emotional maturity? How good is his emotional intelligence, EQ compared to IQ? Despite the fact that we know that in real life today, behavioral scientists have told us that 70-80% of your Success, achievement, fulfillment will depend on your EQ and not your IQ. Yet, we keep on and on and on trying to build the IQ, build the left brain characteristics of, particularly of, uh, you know, uh, boys. That goes on till we reach the point of where a person has to select a life partner. To many, many, many boys, Having a girlfriend, having a partner, having a wife is a conquest. It is not that feeling of warmth and love and care which you get when you get a life partner. It is a conquest. It is like this young guy who has been dreaming of a Harley Davidson motorbike. For years he has been thinking about it and one fine day he has enough resources and everything and he goes and buys that bike. He's been dreaming, fantasizing about the bike. Now he has got it. Let's say he works in a typical organization where Monday to Friday he's busy with his uh, work. So what does he do? He locks up the bike in the garage. And if he's working from home, he's on his laptop. If he has to go to office, maybe the company vehicle picks him up and drops him or whatever. And on weekend, he goes and opens the garage, dusts the bike and starts. The moment he starts the bike, the bike goes vroom, vroom, and the bike is all raring to go to take him to Nandi Hills. The bike never says, where were you the whole week? You neglected me. You didn't even come and say hi to me. You didn't dust me even once throughout the week. Now you suddenly turn up at the weekend. You expect me to cooperate with you. I won't. I won't let my engine rev up. Does a bike ever say that? No. And then this guy wonders, why does my wife behave that way? When I'm busy, I'm busy. When I've got my friends, I've got my friends. When I've got my activities, I'm doing that. Now I'm saying, hey, I'm free. Now come. Let's go and enjoy the weekend. And she starts sulking. If I raise my voice, she even starts crying. How many men I've come across who have said, I just cannot seem to come to any understanding with my wife. Because whenever we have differences, whenever I'm trying to 
very logically explain my point of view before you know it she breaks down and starts crying and i don't know how to handle it so either i start shouting at her saying don't cry which makes matters worse she cries even more or i say i can't handle this and i start walking out men are still cave men remember they want to run away into their caves so when i start walking out she comes running behind me and she says where are you going how can you leave me like this and go away what am i supposed to do well the answer lies in the fact that what he is supposed to do should have been taught to him 20 years back when he was a growing up boy nobody ever bothered to help any boy understand these very basic uh, uh, things and that is why they continue if he becomes a boss in an organization he uses his voice and his anger and his shouting to get results in fact next thursday i have taken up this uh, topic how to deal with the stress of an unreasonable boss we have our third thursday talks so this thursday i'm going to be talking about it i'm collecting a lot of data i'm even doing a survey among people to find out what their opinions are about their bosses i think it's going to be an interesting you know over enlightenment for all of us including me though i have never had a boss in my life okay so when this guy becomes a boss he uses the same tactics with his partner he uses the same tactics with his children he uses the same tactics and he is not even aware that he is doing something wrong and as i have been reminding the regular viewers we have this giw amazing phenomenon great indian woman the giw is such a resilient character you know we talk about uh, uh, cockroaches being so resilient that you do anything with uh, them they still survive i think cockroaches cannot compete with the giw the great indian woman survives anything she will go to work and she'll survive this horrible boss and the targets and the customers and the horrifying uh, you know uh, colleagues and those uh, predators who try to act funny with because she is a woman they survive all that on the road they survive the roadside romeos at home they survive this horrible uh, husband and as their son grows up she starts surviving onslaught from her own son how many women i have had who have told me <coughs> my husband you know he is like this He's irritable. He's short-tempered. He's this. He's that. Initially, I used to get very worked up. I used to be very unhappy. I used to cry at nights. I used to try everything. But then I realized, no, I can't change him. So I accepted it. Okay, let him shout. Let him scream. Let him do whatever he wants. But if he is happy, it's okay. I'm. I'm not going to get too put off by it. But you know, Doctor Ali, of late, my son has started behaving like his father. I was shocked. How dare he behave like this with me? You know what the answer is. You have taught him. You have been that typical role model of a GIW, conveying to him that a man has a right to do anything with his woman. In this case, his woman is not his partner but his mother. He starts practicing on her. and if the mother tolerates what the son is uh, doing then when he grows up he has a partner he automatically starts behaving in the same uh, manner as uh, uh, that so the question comes what are we doing at least what are we doing for the coming generation just before covid struck i was talking to a huge group of over 2000 degree students of a very reputed girls college the topic had been on you know these roadside romeos or the way men behave in offices on streets and how they misbehave with uh, women in fact we had the police commissioner addressing them before uh, 
uh, me and uh, talking about law and order and how you can complain and you can do all these things. You have your rights, all that. I took a completely different stand. I said, OK, there are these horrible guys on the road and in your office and in your locality. And it is very unlikely that you can bring about a change in them. But you also have in your locality, among your extended uh, uh, family, among your friends, you also have young boys, eight years, 10 years, 12 years. They have not yet come to adolescence. They are still asexual beings. Have you taken the trouble of giving them a little bit of understanding, a balanced role of what are gender issues? What is the difference between boys and girls? How to respect a girl and not look down upon her? Regardless of what some of your peers and your friends may say, hey, you know, girls are sissies and we are macho and all. It doesn't help. Have you taken the trouble? These are children at such a vulnerable age. You can do anything with them. You can mold them. You can make them understand what it means to be a person who takes both genders along. How it is going to be beneficial to him. He's not doing charity to the girls by being nice to them. Simple things like that we have not been able to do. And that is why this cycle goes on and on and on. Very often, whether you like it or not, you can throw you know, shoes and slippers at me. I find that whenever we have these men who shout, men who are uncouth, men who are rude, men who misbehave, when I see deep into it, I realize that the women in his life have contributed more to make him what he is rather than the men in his life. Probably his father, his brothers, his all those people never bothered. Let him do what he wants. But it was the women in his life, perhaps starting from the mother or sister or grandmother or whoever it was who molded him when he was younger, who gave him, they may have taught him some basic thing like you should be nice to everybody, you should accept gender, but that's only word of mouth. Role modeling. You're all aware that children are very poor at listening to the concerned adults, but they're very good at mimicking them. So when they were such poor role models, the GIWs, what they say in the typical no, no, Bollywood movies. Kya karo? Ma hu na. I don't know how many times I've heard that dialogue. And it doesn't stop with that also. The ma who has become a widow and wearing that white sari and is, you know, slogging away for survival. Eventually, you know what she says? Aayenge. Mere Karan Arjun aayenge. So now he is, she is training her sons to come and take revenge. She's not training them to become good human beings, to be nice and soft people, to bring about you know, peace and harmony. They should come and take revenge because somebody killed their father 30 years back. That's what I mean. I mean, that's an over-dramatization, but it actually happens in real life. In a very subtle manner, this is what we are you know, taking them towards. So even if we can't change society as it exists today, even if you can't change men, women, whatever their issues are, their differences and how they overcome, there's a lot that can be done, of course. But even if they can't do, if we can't do that, let us at least all of us concerned adults work with the coming generation, both boys and girls, build up self-esteem of girls, I find grown-up women did exceedingly well in academics. They are good-looking, attractive. They are smart, presentable, with very good etiquette, very good culture, manner. Everything is there with them. They have moved into very good careers. They are achievers, but they still have low self-esteem. 
I know of women belonging to this category who are beaten up by their husbands and of late even by their boyfriends. And they don't utter a word in protest. They hide the negative qualities of that man, for example. That's what I meant by saying that sometimes it is women who are contributing more. On the flip side, what can they do? Was beautifully exemplified by an anecdote. Don't ask me if it is true or false. Okay, a lot of interesting stories. Sometimes we don't need to know whether they are true or false. Some years back, America had a president called uh, Barack Obama and his wife, Michelle. They became, I mean, he became president. They moved into White House. And one day, a gentleman turned up to Barack Obama and said, I have built the most posh and beautiful and state of the art hotel in Washington. I want you, sir, to come and please inaugurate it. So Barack was free on that particular day and he said, OK, come, let's go and inaugurate. And he told his wife, come, we'll go. He says, this hotel is exceptionally great and we'll get to see what it is all about. And we'll inaugurate, have dinner and come back. She said, OK. They landed up at the hotel and the owner was standing there to receive. And while he greeted the president very formally, he turned to Michelle and said, Hi, Michi, how are you? And Michi looked at this man, a little puzzled, and then said, Hey, Tommy, how are you? And they gave a tight hug to each other and they're jumping all over the place and were so thrilled. Anyway, Barack didn't know what to do. He walked in and sat down and waited for his wife. She finished all that thrill and shouting and enjoying and all that and came in. And Barack said, what is this? Who is he? She said, you know, he was my classmate in school. When we were in middle school, he had fallen in love with me. And he used to go on saying, I'll marry you, I'll marry you. Then they got transferred and they went away. I never saw him after that. I'm meeting him after 30 years. And obviously it was so thrilling that I met him. Okay. Barak said, yeah, if you had married him, you would have been the owner of such a posh hotel. Michel said, no. If I had married him, he would have been the president of the United States. We need more missions, particularly in India. Okay. So as we come to the halfway point, and uh, you know, I'm going to be looking forward to all your questions and comments. Let me just quote to you this wonderful author, John Gray. When you want to understand man-woman relationships, whether wife, men shout or women, there was another book very famous book of John Gray, which the title is What Your Mother Couldn't Tell You and Your Father Didn't Know. In that, there is a quote. A man's orientation to intimate relationships is much more goal-oriented than a woman's. His action in the beginning of the relationship are the steps he takes to achieve his goal, like buying the Harley Davidson. Instinctively, he touches her affectionately, buys her flowers, calls her from work, plans dates, looks at her when she talks, notices how beautiful she is, listens to her stories, and behaves in other ways to say that he cares. Practically speaking, he's on the hunt. His goal is creating an intimate relationship with the woman he has chosen as his mate. He's fully focused. Once he has achieved that goal, the hunter's instincts shut down. Instead of regressing, he progresses. Wonderful way John Gray has put it, huh? He progresses. Instead of buying flowers, he shares his complete income. Instead of calling from work, he comes home each day. Instead of planning dates, he plans to live his entire life with her. Instead of giving affection, he gives her sex. Instead of just looking and listening to her when she talks, he feels a greater responsibility and tries to solve her problems. 
once a man attains his goal, he no longer focuses on repeating the things he did to get these. Instead, he focuses instinctively on doing what it takes to stay there. Like his ancestor, he concentrates on being a good provider. Isn't that a food for thought for all of us? So, I just want to leave you for a minute with that thought in your mind. And I request Seema to quickly update you on what's happening. And then I'll be back. Hello, good morning. Uh, today we also have some live audience. I wish I could turn the camera and show you. So yeah, we have our studio here and you all are on that side. And if any of you wishes to come, please let us know. You can sit here and watch Dr. Ali's talk. And uh, we are, uh, uh, yes, Banjara is bustling. Lots of activities here, lots of action here. I'll tell you about a few of uh, them coming up this week. Uh, so to start with today, we have, uh, uh, you know, a webinar which is planned for our IPCG program. So if any of you is outside Bangalore and who wants to, uh, you know, learn about self, uh, I mean, go into their inward journey as well as reach out to others as professional counselors, here are the details. Please reach out. In fact, Sunita is going to be putting up the link also. So you're most welcome to join us today. And uh, all the details are given here. So from 4 o'clock to 5.30 today, uh, we are going to be, Team Banjara is going to be telling you about this program, how we will go about it, how we give you a personal mentor. And uh, it's going to be a self-paced learning. So all people outside uh, Bangalore are most welcome to attend this webinar, right? And uh, more action in uh, uh, Banjara. So on uh, Thursday, we have, uh, okay, another uh, uh, sexuality workshop which is coming up uh, this week. So please uh, look at the details and uh, yeah, you can again reach out to us. This is a paid webinar. It's on a very sensitive topic. And uh, if you want to take part in that, again, reach out to us. Uh, Ali will be discussing, there will be a lot of uh, you know uh, topics and we have uh, a book uh, left that will be sent to you, some pointers and things like that. If you want to come for one-on-one -on -one counseling, you know that is also a part of this program. So just uh, look for these details and uh, you know reach out to us. We'll tell you more about it. And yes, our HH talk, Helping Hand Talk, which happens every third Thursday of the month. Ali was telling you this Thursday, coming Thursday, we have this very interesting uh, topic on uh, you know handling the stress of an unreasonable boss. So please come, you know, sitting down uh, in the classroom and watching it live is a totally uh, different experience. And just like our, uh, you know, how the format we follow here in FB Live, uh, we'll follow a similar format there also. So Ali will be talking on this and, you know, the audience can also discuss and ask questions from Ali. So yes, that is what is planned for this week. And reach out to us. We are always there. Uh, any, any of your needs, counseling or anything, I request Ali to come back. Yes, I'm back. Right. Vinita says, Ali, but how do we handle such situations, especially if it's an important relationship? We just become speechless at that moment. It's also true. If we react at that moment, situations get, become worst, and most of them end up crying is very deep rooted. See, this is one thing which I've always felt to avoid you know, that today, right now, there is going to be an argument or there's going to be unpleasantness. You are on the long-term basis creating more and more situations for conflict, for unpleasantness. You have to have a slightly broader outlook. Yes, today I know that if I argue back, if I give my viewpoint or if I raise my voice, things are going to be unpleasant. It's worth it. Because you do it once, two, twice, three times, people realize that I, the man particularly, since we are talking about man-woman relationship, the man realizes that he cannot walk all over her. 
I told you a very dangerous trend which I've seen in the last few years. Earlier, I used to come across women who get married, whether it's love marriage or arranged marriage, doesn't make a difference. Go through that honeymoon phase, settle down, maybe have children, whatever it is. And then a point comes when some differences come and the husband gets very aggressive, abusive. But you know, the trend that I'm seeing very surprisingly is this girl is in a relationship. She's not married to the guy. Sometimes it's a, even a clandestine relationship. You know, her parents don't know because they would not approve of it. And she hasn't told anybody. It's only a one to one that uh, she's in a relationship with. And this guy starts becoming abusive. He starts getting physical with the, her and she tolerates it. Now, we are supposed to be progressing, right? 21st century girls are supposed to be much more advanced, much more independent, much more capable than their mothers were. But deep down inside, I find that is not the case. And that is what happens, what Vinita said just now, that we become speechless at that moment. Okay, at that moment, you become speechless, right? But you know it's a pattern. You know that such things are happening and will continue to happen. So are you preparing yourself that next time it happens, I'm not going to be speechless? Or for some reason, I become speechless at that moment just to avoid that what you said no for the situation becoming worse later on do something about it just because the crisis at that moment is over the argument is over don't just relax bring it up in whatever form later assert your rights whenever somebody tries to assert her rights people don't like it and situation deteriorates the aggression increases. But if you are consistent, if you are assertive, you're not, you know, abusive, you are not aggressive, you are not shouting, you are not screaming, you are not trying to dominate, but you are being very assertive. So much and not more than that. I will not accept, I will not tolerate this, this, this situation. I have my own rights, I have my own dignity, I have my own self respect. I do not accept this. The message over a period of time goes through. That much I can assure you. I do understand that, you know, issues which started, as I told you, from the caveman, the caveman days to the very, very traditional uh, society that we had one or two generations back. It's not that easy to break it, but we have to make a beginning somewhere, right? Navina says the thing which I do as a wife is that if my husband doesn't behave in a proper manner, I immediately bring to the notice and voice it out. Also, I have a 12 and a half year old son to whom also I strongly say that this behavior is not acceptable and explain to him that you need to respect me. And also tell my husband to do proper role modeling in front of our son so that he learns to respect women and also show love and compassion going forward the son would follow the same absolutely right Navina. he will i can assure you he will this is amazingly good please note what Navina said all women can do that regardless of what sort of man she is dealing with it is not so much about the other person it is about you you need to look inside yourself strengthen yourself i told you these girls who are getting beaten up by their boyfriends primarily what is their issue the issue is not with the boy he'll take advantage there there'll always be these nasty characters floating all over the place you can avoid them no but she doesn't you know why because she suffers from low self-esteem she feels nobody loves her I will never forget that very, very touching incident where there was this 17-year-old girl who used to write letters to me from the time she was a kid. She was in a different city, etc. Once had written to me, for whatever reason, we won't go into details, saying that I want to kill myself. I didn't know what to do. I immediately wrote back to her saying that your life is valuable. You have a future, however bad things may be looking right now. We can do something about it. I am there for you. 
I will do hand holding and I will make sure. And you know why? Because, dear, I love you very much. I cannot let you go like this. I cannot tolerate the thought that even you are uh, that you are even getting such thoughts in your mind that you want to end your life. I love you so much that I care for you this much. Signed Ali uncle and nobody. I'm not her real uncle. She hasn't met me for years. She had seen me only when she was a kid. Anyway, it was a bad phase. It passed off. Obviously, it was at the thought level and whatever the crisis also she overcame. But you know what she wrote to me? She said, uncle, this is the first time that somebody told me that I love you. 17 years this child has lived in this world and nobody has told her that they love her. And she is the only child of very loving parents. The parents would not dream that their daughter is going through this sort of uh, situation. She never told them. But they did not verbally express love. And if at all they showed some signs of love, they did it based on how many marks she got in her exams. You get me? Simple things, but this is what happens. Okay. Smurti says, Ali, what happens if husband is not the problem? He is understanding and caring, but fails to defend or give support when required. Yes. What to do when it's not family member, but other male members in the uh, family? Yes. Now, who is important to you? Your partner. He, you have to build your understanding, your communication, your bond with this person. That outsider who is being nasty can always be taken care of if you work as a team. But you know that right now he is not defending you or he is not giving you support when it is required. Don't argue with him. Don't go on nagging him saying you have to support me, you have to be with me, why are you keeping quiet? He won't understand. Because like I told you, there could be a deep hidden cause for it. That he was not taught how to express his emotions, he was not taught how to handle this. I've come across so many men who are totally at a loss when it comes to an emotional situation. You give them a work-related or a target-related or a project-related decision to make. They make wonderful decisions, left brain. But when it comes to something emotional like this, that somebody is, you know, family member is being nasty to my wife. How do I handle that family member is also related to me? I have to give respect. What will others think? What sort of trouble I will get into? So you have to start off by training him. It will take time. It will take effort. But it is not impossible. Divya says, Ali, I feel sometimes the men may take it for granted when they know that females are dependent on them both emotionally and financially. They do in such a way that it leads to depression and they also tell you, you are a female, what can you uh, do? Agreed. Again, do you know why they do it? Because this is what has been ingrained into them. Now you have to undo uh, that. Okay. Now this guy knows that you are dependent on him financially. You are a homemaker. He goes to office. He gets a salary at the end of the uh, month. But supposing you tell him, that this month I'm not going to cook. All the ingredients are there in the kitchen. New gas cylinder is uh, there. You can order and get whatever sabzi and whatever else you want on a day-to-day -day basis. Now you start taking over the cooking. What is the guy probably going to say? Hey, I can't do that, man. I don't know cooking. And even if I did, you know, I don't have the time for it. I have so many other things to do. So in a subtle way, in a gentle way, you are making the person understand that there is a concept between a man and woman, which we refer to as codependency. The wife depends on the husband for the salary. The husband depends on the wife to do the cooking, to keep the house in order, to create a family by bringing up the children and being with them for maximum number of hours with the children so that you know the children do not feel neglected when father is away for long periods of uh, time. So the more we can inculcate this in the man, slowly, steadily, takes time, takes effort, takes a lot of patience. I agree it's not as simple as what I'm saying. 
But at the same time, I, I assure you, it is not impossible. I have seen such changes taking place to whatever extent. Don't even expect a miracle. Don't expect that one fine day he'll, you know, just uh, like he'll get enlightenment under a Bodhi tree or something. But the attitudes, the behavior does change. Sureka says the husband doesn't shout, but chooses to withdraw from all responsibilities quietly. The wife feels frustrated for despite talking to him about it, he continues with his indifferent ways. You have to blame this husband's great, 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 grandfather. He was a caveman. And the moment something seems to be going wrong, the weather changes or a tiger roars somewhere in the vicinity or some you know, strong people are coming with spears and daggers. He immediately runs into his cave. And he realizes, I am safe over here. They cannot attack me inside my cave. They won't even find me that I'm here. Now that, the equivalent of that is the cave which you are talking about. Withdrawing from all responsibilities quietly and pushing off into his uh, cave. Don't bother me. I can't handle this. You handle it by uh, uh, yourself. Agreed. There are all these types of people. Somewhere along the line, we have to step by step work on this. See, none of these problems can be solved overnight. The sad part is that many of us look for instantial solutions. But Ali is not one of those uh, gurus or babas, you know, who can give you some. Uh, Vibhuti or who can chant some mantra and say that now your problem will be over. Unfortunately, I teach self-empowerment to people, which has an effect long term. Not only with the current situation, not only with the current person in your life, but for all times to come. Longevity is improving. Healthcare is improving. Many of you young people are going to hit a century. So if you are all of whatever, 30, 40, 50. Now you've got another 50, 60 years, 70 years ahead of you. Uh, you look at life in that holistic manner and say, yes, if I have to spend six months or six years trying to achieve this, it's still worth it because it will give you dividends for the next 60 years, right? Navina says, I think nobody can take women as granted unless and until the woman allows it. We need to train girls to become bold and voice out to be assertive. Simultaneously, boys should be trained right. Yes, that's exactly what I mentioned. Navina is repeating that. But the uh, bottom line of it is, why does a woman allow the man to do it? Because she feels unworthy. That is what causes all these issues. If a woman understands that she has a worth, whether she's earning money or not, whether she's a homemaker, whether she's whatever she may uh, be, as I said, this concept of codependency, she has a very significant role to play, whether as a daughter, as a wife, as a sister, as a mother, as a teacher, as a professional, whatever she may be in life. Once she understands and build, builds up what we call as the self-worth, you will realize that she will be able to handle her relationships in a much better uh, manner. This, I agree with Navina, has to be taught from the beginning. That's why I said, and I'm repeating again, work with the younger generation, please. Even one child who thinks differently, who thinks positively, and who is more balanced, be it a boy or a girl, you will be achieving a lot. Okay, Rakshanda says, it's a challenge for working women to manage both workplace and a home when men have came in attitude, especially as it affects the children adversely. Agreed. But just because it is difficult or a challenge, just because it is affecting the children, we are not going to let go, no. There are so many things which are a challenge. There are so many things which do affect uh, um, us. But we do something to overcome it, isn't it? If I have a stomach upset, it's a challenge even to eat my food. My stomach is rumbling. I can't concentrate on my work. Do I give it up? No, I don't. 
I tried 20 different methods. I may or may not go to the doctor. I may try out some grandmother's remedy. I may try out some Ayurvedic treatment. I, I go on doing it till I find that my stomach is now better and I can deal with it. The same thing needs to be done at the mental health level. What we do at the physical health level? Straight, simple. You even ask half a dozen friends. Hey, I've been having this constant, you know, rumbling in the stomach and indigestion. Nothing seems to be working and I don't want to get on to some antibiotics or something. Inevitably, some friend or somebody will suggest to you something. Yeah, my grandmother used to say this and do that and it works. Why don't you try it out? You try it out. You don't succeed. Nothing happens. You move to the next alternative. But you keep doing it till you find a solution, isn't it? We do this so regularly when it is physical issues. We should learn to do it when it comes to mental and emotional uh, issues. So like Ramina says, I feel also it's important to understand the psychology of man and woman. Probably read a book on it and then empath empathize with men and vice versa. Yes, that's what I've been telling no, Ramina. Start with, for example, John Gray's the basic first book which he wrote, which became a bestseller, continues to be a bestseller 50 years down the line. What is that? Men are from Mars and women are from Venus. He says, men, you see, if you have a spouse who belongs to a different city, different culture, don't you realize? Oh, my husband is a Tamilian, I'm a Kannadiga. So, you know, the Tamilians behave this way. They've got their food habit like this. Their language is like that. This is how their daily routine is. This is how their family structure is. But I'm a Kannadiga. So, I have been born and brought up with this culture, this language, this food habit. Now, I need to go halfway, adapt. Because I've chosen to marry somebody who's not a Kanadiga, he's a Tamilian. Now, what John Gray says is it's not like a difference between Tamilians and Kanadigas. They're from different planets. Imagine if you had a spouse who came from a different planet, and that is what has actually happened. The differences are so wide. And yet the beauty of it is it is not impossible, it is only difficult. More than anything else, it requires that patience which comes out of what is lacking so much in society today. Delayed gratification. Yes, here are some of the books. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. The second one, Mars and Venus in the bedroom, talks about sexuality. The sexual relationship between a husband and a wife. And Mars and Venus on a date talks about how you start building up a relationship at the initial uh, stages, which also is such a neglected area. When you fall in love, you don't realize that this person has any negative uh, qualities. And then you, you know, feel bad that uh, uh, you found out uh, uh, things. Lakshmi says, boys have to be taught to respect girls and women from their childhood. When the husband makes his wife cry, wife should stand for herself and tell. Nothing hurts her more than uh, more when the husband ill treats her as the wife loves her and has to share life with uh, him. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. There are ways and means of doing it. If you also shout, you may not get results. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it is good that, you know, the woman also raises her voice and says, you're not the only guy who knows how to shout. You know, I also can uh, shout. But depending on the situation, depending on the individual, depending on the relationship that you have, definitely what works is to let go at that moment and bring it up later. When people are in a good mood, when you have all the time in the world, when you have the privacy, raise it up and try to see how that issue can be tackled, right? Venita says, very true, but though we repeatedly tell many of them, when we counsel others, Many mothers are still very partial to their sons. They only try to convince us. Yes, Vinita, as, as I have taught you in the counseling DCS course and in so many situations that you can only take the horse to the water. You cannot make him drink. But one thing I want to tell you when it comes to counseling you, when as a counselor, you are non-judgmental, you are non-directive, you have empathy, you are able to accept the person as is where is. And then when you subtly raise this point saying that, see, this is what will probably work. This could be a better alternative or something. When you do that and you have this 
adamant mother who says no this doesn't work and this is not okay and all that leave it you have put the seed in the ground you'll be surprised sometimes it germinates much later after the summer is over and when the monsoon comes then it germinates so sometime when the person realizes that this is not working that is not appropriate that is not giving me results that's when she wakes up and thinks hey somebody had said that this could be a proper or an alternative shall i do that and that's how the thing moves ahead okay harsha says i realized when women become assertive and bold and voice their opinion the men automatically apologize and mend their ways you've been very lucky harsha not all men do that let me caution you sometimes they get even more angry but is worth it let them get angry for some time you remember that old poster which sometimes the shopkeepers used to uh, uh, put up saying that you know i give credit you no pay i get mad i no give credit you get mad better you get mad i'd rather save my money because i'm giving you credit and you're not going to pay me so it's like that you know even in human relationships human relationships are nothing but you know commercial transactions in a different manner learn that a good shopkeeper says sorry i'll do less business i don't mind but i'm go not going to take the risk of giving credit and this fellow running away with the um, uh, not paying me the money and i'm going to be deeply in trouble so i don't want to even uh, take up that uh, sort of uh, uh, thing yes shila says right not all men will apologize and men they ways don't expect that harsha has been very lucky that you know to get such a thing but not all of us get it and let's not even accept uh, these things so when you know that it takes time it takes effort but if you understand the value of it and if you are convinced that these things eventually do get you result that is very important you know when you are not well and when you go to a doctor and the doctor says this is going to take a lot of treatment okay nothing will happen in the next 3 days or 3 weeks it may take 3 months of you know therapy and medication because you have faith in the doctor because you feel that yes this treatment by this doctor will eventually cure me for 3 months you survive all the pain that has to be gone through number of consultations whatever tests have to be done whatever you know food habits you have to change you do all that with the hope that it will work and chances are it works but it doesn't work all the time despite all that at the end of 3 months you may still be as sick as you were then what do you do you change doctors you change the methodology you change the treatment but you continue till you get it right navina says i encourage my son to express his emotion so that he doesn't suppress and doesn't take it out in inappropriate ways i also encourage him to cry if he feels like and says it's okay to cry of course the credit goes to the counseling course which i did in banjara thanks a lot for that compliment navina yes there are ways and means we have been acting only as a conduit you know we are just the liaison which helps uh, uh, this thing shila rightly says consistently having a polite assertive stand does uh, uh, help if you can show that you are not getting pulled down you are not getting uh, you know uh, submissive or you are not breaking down and crying eventually the other person uh, uh, learns and the same thing when sindhu says how to handle situation and husband's mother keeps supporting him even if he's wrong i have answered that partly but i'm again telling you who is important to you in, uh, in life it is your husband forget about the mother if you improve i mean uh, you know develop a better relationship with your spouse no mother in law nobody else can come in i always say that whenever there's a situation of pati patni or wo the wo can be a mother in law also you have to ensure that you are not drifting away from your spouse and creating that gap into which the wo comes and sits the wo as i said can be an extramarital affair the wo can be a mother in law the wo can be a bottle of liquor anything work on that it can be done let me uh, wind up by tell, telling you uh, a survey that was done in usa don't ask me how why what they did and whether it's applicable to india or not but it was very interesting which said that you know in general the happiness graph which we draw you know how happy people are for women the survey showed 
that they are happier in the age group of 22 to 32 and then after 45. So if you unfortunately happen to be between 32 and 45 and you are an unhappy lady, please wait for your 45th birthday. And in the meanwhile, Sunita has put up the next uh, week's topic, which is what I was telling you, creating win-win situations, whether it's man-woman relationship, whether it is work-related, anything, you can do it. So enjoy yourself. Have a wonderful time. Happy Valentine's Day on Monday. And we shall meet again next Saturday. Bye-bye. available right here with me should never lose out so we are very particular that wherever you live whichever part of the country whichever part of the world you live in you have an interest in human behavior you want to learn understand people you want to reach out to people you should not be deprived and that is what IPCG does it offers you an opportunity to pick up practical skills from wherever you are, whatever you are doing, whatever may be your background, you can learn and practice these basic skills of reaching out and giving emotional support.